Olivia, it's so good to have you on the Jewelry Business Academy podcast today. Thanks so much for joining me. Uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm so excited to have you here today. Um, I've been looking forward to this episode for a while now. Um, and this is a really extra special episode because I've been working with you for a few months and I know you and your business really well. And I know that your story is really going to inspire so many jewelry business owners who are just starting out and even those who've been going for years. So yeah, I'm really excited to have you here and for you to so. share Thank your you. story. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very excited to be here. I'm um, listening to some of your podcasts and I'm excited to be a guest. I'm honored to be to be chosen too. So thank oh, you. Oh, amazing. Yeah, I'm super excited for everyone to listen to this. So before we dive into all my questions, do you mm -hmm. want to go ahead and introduce yourself to our listeners and just share a little bit of your background and how you got to where you are today? Sure. Um, so my name is Olivia Shoemaker. My business is Olivia Ewing Jewelry. It's, um, Ewing is my family name, so a uh, family middle name. So, um, so I got the brand name. I started my business about 10 years ago um, while working full time in fashion. So I came from I came from a fashion background. I studied at Parsons. Um, I always wanted to go into wedding dresses, actually. I've always like, oh, amazing. really loved the wedding industry. I don't I like love the idea of creating something special for that we remembered for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. um, and I love dresses, but the fashion industry wasn't really for me because um, I like working with my hands. And so when I was working full time, I started to just sort of tinker around with jewelry, take some extra classes here and there. I lived in Brooklyn at the time, so that was very easy to do. Um, and I started with an Etsy shop in 2012 and um, things just kind of exploded from, from there. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, that's incredible. Okay. So I have lots of questions about that, but do you want to tell everyone a little bit more about your brand? What inspired you to create your pieces? Your pieces are incredibly unique and so, so meaningful. Mm -hmm. And so I'd love if you could just share a little bit more about your inspiration and and the types of jewelry that you're making? Sure, so all of my jewelry is inspired by nature. Um, I've actually never been like a huge jewelry person myself, but I do love, I love nature. I love taking hikes and walks and I've always collected little like twigs and shells. Um, and when I first started making jewelry, I discovered that you can, you can literally cast any organic material. So I was like, that's so cool. I can cast twigs. I can mm -hmm. cast my collection. So that's sort of how the inspiration came. I started to just cast like twigs and moss and lichen and all sorts of things and kind of figure out what worked and what, what made sense in metal. Um, and so all everything is made out of twigs and bark um, in solid gold, but it starts from twigs. Um, and the style is just like very low key. I don't like... I like jewelry that you can just like my jewelry. I've had the same pieces on probably for 12 years. So I don't yeah. change my jewelry. I just like jewelry that you can just live in and wear and time think about. It's not like a, a fashion thing that matches your outfit. It's just something that matches your personality and who you are and you just keep it on. So oh, I love that. To create. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, your pieces are truly unique and they're so timeless and so meaningful. So we'll definitely, we'll link your pages in the show notes um, Great, because anyone listening, you definitely want to take a look at these rings. They're just beautiful. And I love the stories behind them as well with all of your couples. Um, so I want to dive back to when you were working in the corporate world, in the fashion industry, mm -hmm. and you started and you decided to start your own business can you take us back to that time and um, just share the thought process of leaving the corporate world to start your own jewelry business? What was that like? And what would your advice be for a listener who is in a very similar position as you? Maybe they're even in the fashion industry and they thought this was their mm -hmm. dream job. And now they're feeling a little bit disappointed by the reality of how the fashion industry works at that level. Right. And they're wanting to go out on their own and they're wanting to really use their design passion in a different way. And they just don't know how to start. What would be your advice for them? Um, so I didn't do, I didn't leave and then start. I started 
And it was a lot, it was very hard work for, I think there was about two years that I overlapped with my full-time job. I worked like until one in the morning. I got up and worked. I worked on my lunch breaks. I worked all weekend. Like it was just nonstop because I knew, I knew where I was. I was in a bad personal situation. I didn't like living in New York and I didn't like my job. So I was like, something has to change. So that really gave me a lot of motivation to just figure something else out. Um, And for me, making things is like really a creative, it's a stress relief and it's an outlet. And so I spent a lot of time just making anybody that knows my jewelry, if they saw where I started, they'd be like, that's, that's not you at all. It's just like, it was really bad. Um, I doubt it. I doubt it. It was completely different. I had absolutely no money. So I started working in silver, like Mm -hmm. a few silver pieces and brass. I had no gold. I had no diamonds I had no money um but it was just a lot of hard work like every single dollar I made I would you know I got three hundred dollars then I would spend that to do two gold rings that I could Mm -hmm. afford for three hundred dollars and then um it's just a lot of hard work and perseverance and listening to your customers I never actually intended to go into engagement rings but I was able to make one and people loved it and it was not even the style that I thought would like take off or anything. It was just something that I made, but I just listening to your customers, getting a lot of feedback. Um, I don't know if I necessarily recommend it, but I did a lot of very low price custom work, but that helped me. um, And confidence. Well, it helped me build up my inventory and build up my catalog. So that custom work, like somebody was paying for me to create a style where I knew it would, that was going to sell and then I could also add it to my shop and it was um, just adding new styles to the shop basically yeah. for free like they were getting it for free pretty much but it was <laughs> they got a great deal <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah or just you know a very tiny bit of, of money but it it helped me help practice and then it also helped me build items into my shop um, and just yeah like just really putting all of your effort into it. I remember people, a lot of coworkers used to say like, oh, I'm so jealous. I really wish I could do that too. And then they would go out to bars and clubs. And like, well, Mm -hmm. you know, like (laughs) I would love to have a social life. (laughs) I don't have any friends right now. Like, and now Um, I do, it's great. 10 years later, I have a whole family. So it's wonderful, but it was worth it. But it's just a lot, a lot of work in the beginning and just really, a lot of trial and error and just figuring out figuring out what's going to work for you I guess Mm, I love that and you know I think a lot of people don't realize how much work it is starting a business you Mm -hmm. know it's always going to be work but the first few years if you're trying to go full-time is a significant amount of work and energy that is required um And I love that you just took action, even though you weren't 100% sure which style of designs you were wanting to go into. And I think a lot of people get stuck behind not being 100% sure which direction they want their business to go into, that they never take action. And the key is really take action and get inspiration and get feedback as you go and let your brand develop organically like that. Um, so yeah. I really, I think I, really I read on like a blog or something at the time that just gave the advice, like when you're starting a business, everybody wants everything to be perfect. Mm. And so they never start just yeah. start <laughs> with what you have. So, yeah. I mean, my first photos were from like this little Casio, like I didn't even have a smartphone. So it was like, you know, yeah. point, like terrible photos on like construction paper. Mm but it sold something. So, you know, just like you just get it out there and then you get, you just refine as you go. But Mm. I think there's a lot of pressure on yourself to say like, okay, I have to start with like this amazing collection of jewelry right off the bat. Yeah. (laughs) And it's it's a waste of money, honestly. Like years later, I was like, okay, I'm going to like sort of change my style and do this whole, I spent tons of money doing this whole new collection. And and it didn't sell. <laughs> so yeah. It was like, it was not what people wanted. So yeah, it's not really worth it. You know, it's better to get feedback as you go along until you're bigger and you kind of really understand your market. I think. Yeah. And that's actually, I love that you shared that because it's such a good reminder for new jewelry business owners who are listening to this. Mm-hmm. I see them go and 
get a full collection ready to launch and invest in $10,000 websites and invest in photographers and models and all of this and they launch and they don't get sales and it's heartbreaking to see but the reality is like your approach of spending what you've earned and and starting really slowly built such good solid foundations in your business Mm -hmm. and gave you the time as well to to develop your designs and all of that so I really love that approach and it's such a good such a good reminder for everyone Mm -hmm. you you can't you can't always just start off the bat with the winning collection (laughs) it takes a little bit and it's really good like Etsy is a great platform to launch small you can launch with like three pieces and you'll still get seen yeah and it's not like you're gonna have this weird empty website that doesn't look good it's just it goes in with everyone else's pieces and it's it's a really good way to to start yeah so you're you've been on Etsy for almost 10 years now I know now you have your own site as well but Mm -hmm. what would be your one piece of advice for somebody who is starting off on Etsy um I guess really research how their algorithm works and how their SEO works just to make sure that what you're putting on there is actually getting seen by the right people Mm -hmm. so then you can get the feedback that you know that you need for each piece Um, yeah it's tricky and I don't um my main my main shop is now, <laughs> yeah off of Etsy but yes but it's still a good place to get seen by a certain type of buyer that doesn't know how to find you elsewhere so oh yes definitely mm-hmm. amazing okay so um I just would love to touch a little bit on motherhood and entrepreneurship because I know you have two beautiful children and you Mm -hmm. have this thriving business and you have a really beautiful balance um, of motherhood and entrepreneurship which I know a lot of people it's their dream life that you're you've kind of created so Mm -hmm. would you be open to sharing a little bit more about how you found the best balance for you and your family and your one piece of advice for somebody who's listening to this who would love to eventually have more time with their family and a thriving business and just be able to balance it all sure so I will say the one my biggest motivator in leaving the fashion industry was just looking around and knowing that like I could never be a stay-at-home mother and work in fashion because it just was like completely incompatible. Um, mm-hmm. And I knew I, I always wanted to be a stay-at-home mother. My kids, my daughter is about to turn four. They don't go to daycare and they don't go to preschool or anything. Uh, my son is two, which is well, too small for me so anyway. Cute. But <laughs> <laughs> but I'm with them. I'm home with them. I work in my I work in my home, so I have an office upstairs, and yeah. um, my daughter is just, she's a little bit old enough that she can kind of help me, but um, I do have some extra help that comes in by almost two days a week, mm-hmm. um, but in order to, like, balance everything, you just have to, I guess, have to be very focused and, like, very on task and know what I need to get done each mm-hmm. week instead of, before I was a mother, I would sort of just sit at my desk and uh, <laughs> wait for inspiration shopping, do a, little, do a little work like watch tv while I worked and yeah um you know it was very nice very relaxing and had yeah. eight hours, <laughs> 40 hours a week really to do that so it was great but once I became a mother it was um it was a steep learning curve because I had no idea what to expect um luckily they sort of they sleep a lot in the beginning so I kind of eased into like just when like when I first just had my daughter, it's like, okay, she's down for her three hour nap. Like I got to get shit to do. Like I just <laughs> have to know what to do, line it all up. And like, you just have to be very, very organized and mm. um, just really know. Focused. Very focused. Yeah. Very focused. Um, and it is possible. Luckily I was, had my business well established before having children. Um, I actually, the week I met my husband, I had just quit my job four days earlier and he was oh, thought I was God. totally nuts. He was like, oh, like <laughs> girl, but what is she doing? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so funny. Yeah. So that all kind of worked out great because he didn't live in New York. And so I sort of seamlessly transitioned to my life out in the country and getting married and having kids. But um, yeah, I think it's tough if you're starting out because it is a lot of work, but just mm-hmm. really take advantage of nap times grandmothers 
there's mm-hmm. I mean there's still nights that I put them to bed and then I work until midnight mm-hmm. it's just very busy so mm-hmm. um but it's just my pri- priority to make sure I can stay with them as much as possible until they're older so mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And that's such good advice. Like it's definitely a challenge, but um, I think it's really inspiring for people to see that it can be done. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it does take a lot of work to get there, but it can be done. It can be done. I will so. say my biggest, um, until about 10 months ago, I didn't have any help. Oh, wow. My mother comes a few hours a week, but other than that, I had no help. And my daughter is four, so she stopped napping. And finally, I was like, <laughs> I never wanted to do this, but I'm going to hire a babysitter. Mm-hmm. And this is the best decision I ever made because then that just gives me like a little bit of time. And she's only here one and a half days, but it's like that. I know I have that one and a half days of focus mm. where uninterrupted the kids are, you know, the kids are occupied and safe and fine. And yeah. And um, they still at home with you. So they're still, still nice. at home. They still pop yeah. in and out. Like, you, you've seen them at a lot of meetings. <laughs> yeah. They're so cute. <laughs> they're always in and out and they know I'm here and I go lunchtime I eat lunch with them and so there's I still have that mother time but it's very helpful if you can get help having help to just know like this is your time to work and then just focus out that time Mm, I love that that kind of brings me to another thing I'd love to chat a little bit about Mm -hmm. is um you know building a team and outsourcing tasks and hiring VAs and all of that, which I know you've done a lot of that over the years. Mm -hmm. Um, Can you talk a little bit about the process of outsourcing tasks in your business and any mindset shifts that you had to make? Did it, did you struggle to let go of aspects of your business at any stage? And what advice (laughs) would you have for somebody who's feeling the same way? It's like, my business is my baby. I can't trust anyone with all these little Mm -hmm. aspects. Um, so when I lived, I've had, I've gone through different stages in my business. Um, I would say about six years ago, I had somebody who would come into the studio in New York and help me and she would do production work. Mm -hmm. That to me was a lot easier because she was, I was there seeing everything she was doing. Um, she's a talented jeweler and she was, she was great. Um, after I moved out of New York, it's a lot harder where I am because there's just not an abundance of jewelers, mm. um, which is not in that area. So I didn't have any help until recently, actually with your encouragement. Yeah. <laughs> I just recently hired two people and it was, a, it was very hard for me. Mm-hmm. It was also a great decision. Um, mm-hmm. They, because it's definitely a mindset thing. I'm just like, nobody else knows how to do this. Like, yeah. Nobody else. Nobody else. Can do it as well as me. <laughs> yeah. Like I can do it. But the flip side of that was I wasn't doing it because I didn't mm-hmm. have time. Mm-hmm. So I, maybe I would do it the best, but it's better to have it done yeah. than just not ever get done. Because it's, oh, it's yes. just, you know, I had like a backload, <laughs> a backlog of two years worth of work that was just not getting done. So um, I, now that I've hired two people, I'm actually much more confident working with other people. Mm-hmm. I realize you know, once if you hire the right person, you talk to them, you realize, you know, that they're smart and they're talented in their area that, Mm -hmm. and you give them time to learn and time to, um, train, time to train. Yeah. My one girl is working on all of my photos and my editing and getting photos onto my site. And I gave her the first, I would say the first month she did work, but she also, I just said, just really study my website, study my products and like, know, know what you're working on. And don't worry about speed and that was a really big help to just now I feel like she she knows my style she knows the pieces she can look at it and say oh that's a Naples ring mm. and just knowing that she knows that gives me a lot of confidence um yeah I love that you shared that because you know often when people hire somebody they don't give them the time necessary to to get good at the job you know you need to right. give people training time so I love that you shared that because it does take time, um, especially with your pieces. I mean, they're very detailed and stuff. So, Mm -hmm. um, right. I think you just give them a lot of feedback and yeah, it's like, they have to really know Like, I've been working with my rings for 10 years. So I know, I know them inside (laughs) out and 
she had just seen them for the first time a month ago. So yeah. it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a, a very steep learning curve, but as long as you give like the right support and feedback, I think it's worthwhile. And what would be your one piece of advice for somebody who is hiring or outsourcing for the, the first little task in their business? Is there something particular you look for? Do you look for a, a certain characteristic or personality trait? Like what is the one thing that you would recommend they look for? Um, I would say, well, first I would recommend if you're hiring, especially if you're new, I would say that you should know the position very well yourself mm, because yeah. that's very important. Um, but then that is so company, important. <laughs> very important. <laughs> um, and I made that mistake early on outsourcing like SEO and just things that I didn't understand. And so I didn't know enough to know that they were doing a bad job at the time. Mm. Um, I, I love that you actually brought that up because that's a mistake so many people make. I made it in the early days as well, because mm -hmm. there's aspects of the business where you're like, you know what, I'm just going to hand this right over to the professionals. Often it was ads. I've done this with ads, yeah. you know, and you're like, well, they know what they're doing. And, you know, no, not everyone knows what they're doing. So you have to have a very mm -hmm. good understanding before you outsource anything. So, yeah, I'll right. go back to you with the characteristics. Well, even so. like website design, I did that with my first website. Mm -hmm. If you don't try to build one yourself, like you don't have to know code, but if you don't understand how you want it to look and how you want it to operate, then yeah. like you can't just hand it to some guy who lives. Who builds a website. <laughs> yeah, who builds a website. Like he built a totally functional website for me, but it looks it good but it doesn't brand. yeah yeah, yeah. It no it didn't match so um yeah but back to hiring my biggest one was just looking for people that that I could kind of see as a customer I guess mm -hmm. um not that they are customers but just that had the same like they have the same sort of personality and vibe as me and as my brand I guess mm -hmm. um and yeah. also obviously looking at past work, I, I hired a copywriter and I got tons of applications. I looked through everybody's work. And when I read her work, it was just, it was sort of just a really easy decision. Like she just had the right tone and vibe that I wanted for my site. And, um, but it did, it took me about a week and a half to getting the applications and reading through everything to make the decision. So don't make any snappy decisions yeah take um, your time <laughs> to your find time, the right yeah bit. definitely I did it's worthwhile I did interviews with both of them I mean they're both remote but I did zoom interviews to mm -hmm. just sort of get a feel for how they are as a person make sure they're easy to work with because they might be really yeah. smart but if they have some weird attitude or something or just don't like you're just not on the same page yeah exactly yeah and it's hard to work with them you know what? I completely agree with you. Like personality to me trumps skills because skills mm -hmm. can be taught. Depends what you're hiring them for, of course. But right. generally, like you, especially because we have our own businesses, the whole reason we did this is freedom and being able to choose who we work with and how we work and all of that. So right. personality plays a huge part in into hiring and who you're going to hire. So, And I'll say that's for the two positions that are like, taking over what I did personally mm. so that, that's like that's closer to to my heart um yeah <laughs> when I hire for I have a great team now that does my website I have um an SEO team and I just hired an ads team mm -hmm. that's more skill-based so yeah, that's, that's just talking to them, making sure they've worked with some in similar industries similar brands and um, I don't really care what their personality is, but they're that's true. <laughs> they're good at what that's they do. true. At that <laughs> level, yeah, that's, that's true. Just like, as that's long as they get the job different. done. Yeah, that's more yeah. technical. So yeah. Um, but anything that's going to be touched on my actual website, I want to make sure they understand me who are as on a personal level who I am. Oh yes, for sure. Especially when it comes to copywriting and stuff like that. Yes. So yeah, definitely. Okay, so what would you say, I know you probably have so many, but what would you say is one of the biggest highlights of your entrepreneurial journey over the last 10 years? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think like the most memorable moments mm -hmm. are really early on, like selling my first ring. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget that moment. That, um, that was an engagement ring. It was actually just like, 
a gold band. Mm-hmm. It wasn't an engagement ring, but it was $300, which to me, I was like, cannot believe somebody would spend $300 on something I created. And it was just the <laughs> proudest moment of my life. It was oh, so, I love that. It was awesome. I was, I was at work at the time. I was setting up for like a trade show or something. And I was just like trying not to jump up and down. <laughs> I was so oh. proud. Um, and to me, that means more than like, I mean, every sale is, means something to me and I work, I know a lot of the customers and everything is very special, but like that first one was very special. And then my first engagement ring was also like, I still remember the guy, I dropped it off to him personally. <laughs> so, oh, wow. You know, how it was back then. I, like I brought it to him in, um, in Times Square, he was visiting from Mexico and it was like, it was just, that oh, was, wow. I'll, I'll never forget him. <laughs> so, um, I said, yeah, like all the little milestones in the beginning are just really, really memorable and special. Mm, I love that. You know, yeah, I guess your first sale, you never forget your first sale generally, and especially such a special one. And um, it just, it gives you the push that you need to sort of keep going at the very beginning stages as well. It's like Um, other people believe in you. Yeah. Even if you are not sure you believe in yourself yet. Yeah. And that's so important is, you know, you have to believe in yourself, but sometimes you just don't in the beginning. And so having other people believe in you, in you at that stage um, does help a lot. A lot. Yeah. I mean, I think everybody always feels like sort of an imposter next to other businesses. Oh yeah. Oh, they're making real jewelry and I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm trying, you know. So. So I have a question about imposter syndrome. Yeah. Like, is it something that you still experience to this day or was it just in the early days of your business? And what would you, your advice be to somebody who is experiencing it a lot at the moment? Um, I do. I mean, I think everybody experiences it from time to time mm-hmm. when you're, I don't know, if it's just like evaluating your style and you see somebody else's like much more glamorous or something. And mm-hmm. Um, definitely I don't feel it as much as I did. One thing that really helped me, I don't know how many years ago, but I just stopped following other jewelers because Mm -hmm. you, I find that like, in some ways they're good for inspiration, but it also, it makes you feel like you have to be doing what they do because they're very successful Mm -hmm. instead of just following what you want and what you like and what your customers are asking for it. I don't it's I guess it's like the whole social media like it makes everybody feel like everyone else is doing so much better than you and you know knows more and is more popular and um just not playing into all that just sort of being in your own little bubble to an extent you know now I would say now that I'm a little bit over it I it's it is good in a way to know what other people are doing but when you're in that like initial stage where you just feel very insecure, just do your own thing and get your own audience mm. because they already have an audience and that's for them. Mm. So. Yeah, you know, that is such such good advice because there's so many jewelry businesses out there in any yeah. industry. Choose mm-hmm. any industry, there's going to be thousands of businesses and yeah you know, it's so easy to get in the comparison game and be like, well, how do I stand a chance with all these other businesses doing all this amazing stuff out there? Mm -hmm. Um, Whereas if you just spend all your time and energy and focus on your, you and your business and what you're doing, you can actually be very successful, very successful. Right. There's Um, lots of space for everybody to be successful because there's tons of customers and it's more helpful just focusing on what customers are actually saying to you. Mm. that kind of feedback that you're getting then just oh she's making much more beautiful jewelry (laughs) yeah (laughs) that is that is so true get the feedback from people who are paying you that's Mm -hmm. how you get the real feedback you know Mm -hmm. that to me is the best form of market research doing market research before you launch a business asking people hypothetically if they're going to pay for this is not getting you the right data so I think listening to your customers is the best best way so I'm assuming as a a business owner we've all had so many challenges over the years can you walk us through one of the biggest challenges you've faced 
in the past few years in your business and what sort of mindset work did you have to do and what would you recommend for somebody going through something similar? Um, it's a tricky one. Let me <laughs> you don't I have to share say, the details. No, I know. I can't say I've had like any huge setbacks or issues. Um, Even hmm. just like mindset maybe at the beginning did you have any doubts with your business did you have anyone did you have any anyone not supporting your business or not giving you nice um, feedback about things how did you handle that if you see, did? I will say I'm very lucky everybody my family is very supportive of me um mm. my my husband once he got over the initial shock he was <laughs> <laughs> we started dating he's like my number one Fan, very supportive of me so sweet. um I think my biggest critic is myself and so mm-hmm. I, th- I mentioned earlier there's I don't know like six years ago or something I guess going back to the imposter syndrome I was just like you know my jewelry is not it's not like a real engagement ring and I just felt like I'm what I'm doing is not really I don't know not real jewelry whatever mm-hmm. so I, I made this whole new collection where it was like not as dainty not as um not as much my style yeah and because just because of the little voice in my head just saying like oh you're not you're not you're not doing it right and totally ignoring all the fact the fact that I was getting consistent sales that I was doing well in my business and all the customers like me just I don't know just letting talking myself into feeling insubstantial um yeah and so yeah, I made a big collection and like none of it sold mm. <laughs> and customers were just continuing to buy the pieces. The that other I'm known pieces. For. Yeah. Um, and that was, I mean, that was a huge, it was a big financial step back because it's a lot of money to launch a whole new collection. Um, mm-hmm. But it was also a very good learning experience. I'm glad that it happened early on when it did happen. And mm-hmm. um it sort of it just taught me to you know just listen to don't listen to yourself listen to what you're telling you. <laughs> well I guess I guess listen to yourself but don't listen to the hesitation don't listen yeah like, don't you listen know, to like the doubts and the, the doubts and the, the fears listen giving. to like yeah. the creative pull and the the good feelings you're getting but don't mm-hmm. don't act on on thoughts that are uh, doubting yourself and which right. in the direction you're going <laughs> right yeah listen I mean like they're not even pieces that I wear like mm. it's just I don't know some part of me just thought like this is what real jewelry should look like and it's just mm. ridiculous because there is no one real jewelry <laughs> yeah <laughs> and your pieces are gorgeous so it, I don't know why you'd ever have thought that <laughs> yeah <laughs> in the first place okay so can we chat a little bit more about mindset and entrepreneurship? Um, as entrepreneurs, it's really easy to feel burnt out. And I know a lot of people, especially with everything that's gone on over the past two years, they're yeah. feeling a little bit burnt out. They're feeling tired. A lot of them have lost their spark. A lot of designers are struggling to create. What would be your advice for them like what's something that's helped you over the past two years and what would be your advice to anyone going through something similar um so I'll I think actually having my children really helps me with burnout because Mm -hmm. my life is so compartmentalized so I work on Monday I'm with my kids Tuesday I work Wednesday I'm with them Thursday I work Friday and then so it's very like broken up yeah um and that really helps with burnout, but mm-hmm. I don't think you have to have kids to do that. I think you can just give yourself the freedom to take some time off, like go to yoga three days a week. Mm-hmm. And the more you work, it doesn't mean that you're going to get more done. Yeah, like- I love that you shared that. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think that's something a lot of like corporate business owners have learned in the past few years but you don't actually need to be working 40 hours a week you just need to be working smart and productively mm-hmm. in however many hours you have to work um and if you're tired you don't work well mm-hmm. so you think it's a very critical to just make sure that you have a lot of space from your work and different things going on in your life different um 
different outlets. Yeah, that is that is such good advice because you know I've I've done the same mistake years ago is my business was my only focus at one stage and mm -hmm. and that leads to burnout. <laughs> you know, right. you have to have other things mm -hmm. going on. You have to have like hobbies or family or friends and you have to be very disciplined when you are working, I think. Yeah. And and have those that set work time because otherwise you can work 24 7 when right. when you're when you're starting out and it's hard it's when easy. you're like <laughs> my hobby is making jewelry like yeah i have other hobbies now that i had to develop yeah but, like my favorite thing to do is to work I yeah <laughs> i mean but like my husband goes on a business trip i work until midnight every night like i i actually i really enjoy it but it's not healthy and it's not, you know, it's not recommended. And so I realized that you also have to, you have to make yourself not do it, even if you really feel the pull and desire mm -hmm. to do it sometimes. Yeah, I love that you shared that. I think a lot of jewelry business owners listening to that needed that reminder because, you know, a lot of designers go into it because they love making jewelry. So right. it is a hobby. It often starts as a hobby. Starts as yeah. a hobby and then mm -hmm. becomes a business. So then you do need to find more hobbies. <laughs> Right, so, exactly. Even though it's yeah, lucky I mean, to I have no a job. Before, but, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, amazing. So I'm a huge believer in how you start your day affects your life. So I'd love to know how you start your morning. What's your morning routine? How do you set yourself up for a successful day? My mornings are really chaotic. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, for a while, I was trying to wake up before everybody and that was yeah. great and just like having my morning to read and drink mm -hmm. my tea um I'm not a morning person so usually now like I wake up because my daughter is like staring at me <laughs> Mom, <I> wake up. <laughs> it's a good alarm clock <laughs> yeah and then it's like then I get my son up and then everyone's screaming at me for breakfast so well, I believe <laughs> that's true <laughs> I'm not a good example <laughs> <laughs> um yeah my mornings are crazy but I do try to take like the first when I actually start my work day which is like on depending on the day it's not morning different time. times yeah different times of the day like Monday I start at 11 a.m Wednesday I start at 1 p.m so um but I take the first 10 minutes to just like just focus um organize my emails I'm very like type a so if I have any like a big number in my emails and read that like really stresses me out so everything I just get everything very organized and make sure like zero inbox and orders mm -hmm. are organized um and then I usually after that start with something that I like to do so like work on a piece of jewelry and maybe listen to a news podcast just to like ease into it Mm, I love that. Yeah, I will say you're very organized. Like, you know, <laughs> I know a lot of jewelry business owners and a lot of designers and, you know, often that creative creativity doesn't, and not, not, not a lot of people have the creativity and the organization, but you have right. both. So it's, it's really incredible. And that's why you're, you've been so successful as well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I love that. So with everything that you have going on, your children, your business, or your customers, how do you keep your focus? How do you hone in on your goals and just stay on track in your business? Um, well, you've helped me with that a lot. <laughs> um, Amazing. <laughs> definitely. It helps to have somebody to talk to. Yeah. Um, and just like get yourself away from the day to day and like, you know zoom out to the big picture every once in a while just to make sure you're going where you are mm -hmm. where you want to be going um mm -hmm. I definitely am I'm always on top of looking at sales comparing sales to this year and last year and sales goals and finance spreadsheets and all that um that's something that that a lot of people I, run away from <laughs> so actually, I really enjoy numbers and I enjoy yeah. doing that it's like yeah um yeah that like it's just something that also kind of like relaxes me. So, Amazing. Um, but yeah, I think having somebody to talk to mm. about bigger pictures is definitely, definitely very helpful. Um, whether it's a coach or I also have jeweler friends that I talk to and just about like larger trends and what's going on in our business and our life. And it just mm. helps because when you're just always working by yourself, you get kind of like focused in a little bubble, I think. 
Yeah, I love I love that you shared that because you know, as entrepreneurs working for yourself without like a team in your office with you, mm -hmm. you are on your own a lot, and mm -hmm. it does help to get that outside feedback and insight and just have somebody some people or community around you that you can talk through things who understand your yeah, business so definitely. um yeah I'm I'm really I think that's really good advice to have friends who are jewelry business owners to get a coach mm -hmm. if you need one if you're needing that support um and while we're on the coaching can you touch mm -hmm. a little bit just on um, cause I mean, we worked together for a few months. We're still working together. You were in the jewelry business Academy program. Yeah. And, um, could you just briefly share your experience of the program for anyone who's listening and who's just curious, um, curious about the program, what sort of shifts have you experienced in your mindset and your business over the past few months? Um, I would say it's definitely helped me get even more organized and more focused just to give me like something I've always tried to do, like plan my weeks out ahead. But now mm -hmm. I have, I have you to keep me accountable to make sure that like what I say I'm going to do, I actually do. Yeah. Um, which sounds like might sound like a small thing, but it's actually enormously helpful to just, it's sort of like having a boss. Yeah. <laughs> like in a big company, like somebody's looking yeah. at you, to make sure you've met your sales goals, make sure that you've, you finish the collection that you're supposed to for the customer and like mm. that you're just on top of your job mm -hmm. and when you're working for yourself unless you're even if you are very I mean I think I am very highly motivated it's just yeah. helpful to have the extra um support the extra push like there's a mm -hmm. lot of things I think I like that's something I want to do this year mm -hmm. and then you'll say like okay when are you going to do it yeah <laughs> Okay. <laughs> let's put, let's get that in I the calendar. About the yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then it gets done and it's, it's amazing. So yeah. Um amazing. Like hiring somebody, I you know, I think I've sort of like, oh, maybe I should hire somebody. And you're like, okay, put the application. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. And then two days later I hired my first person. Yeah. I think I would have been like eight months out from that. So mm. it's just it's just really helpful to have accountability. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. And yeah, it's been so much fun working with you. Still so much fun working with yeah. you. Um, so what advice would you give to somebody listening to this who's feeling really inspired by your story and has realized that, you know what, one day maybe I could actually launch my own jewelry business or maybe my business I've had for a few years, which is kind of just mm -hmm. a hobby on the side. Maybe I could actually make this work but I'm still feeling like there might not be enough space for me. I might not be a good enough designer. Like what advice would you give to them? Um, well, if you're looking to start, I would say just start just yeah. because you can't, there, nothing's going to happen if you're just sitting there worried that maybe nobody will like your stuff because you don't know yet. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would just start. And I think like we were saying before, there is, space for everybody you just really have to find your niche like I'm still finding my niche and I'm finding it like I'm narrowing it down more and more and it's like not at all what I imagined it would be when I started um but everybody like there's just so many different niches and interests out there and people looking for somebody's looking for what you want to make I mm. think oh yeah everybody like, I agree it's just like mine is such like a focused little group it's it's funny but <laughs> yeah your 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 pieces are just they're so unique and so gorgeous and yeah I mean I love that you shared the importance of having a niche because a lot of people in the beginning stages mm -hmm. want to please everyone and right. so a friend right. says oh but can you do this and can you do this and can you do gold and silver and this and so I see people wanting to to have options for everyone to make everyone happy but you know yes. having that niche yeah, like, and honing keep, down yeah. on it is and keep to like the materials that you I did that mistake in the beginning people wanted I don't I was I wholesaled in the beginning and somebody wanted for my jewelry so I started yeah. doing plating and like I don't that's not who I am I don't like plating like just yeah. stick with what is meaningful to you and mm -hmm. some people will find you mm -hmm. I believe um yeah. And that's also a really important, like I said earlier, understanding if you're going to start on Etsy or even on your own website, understanding SEO, mm -hmm. like you're not going to get anywhere if you just say like, put it out as an engagement ring. Like 
it's mine are very specific to engagement like engagement rings for nature lovers who are into fantasy novels like yeah <laughs> it's got a, it's a very specific niche <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah because like zales will get you every time on engagement rings so it's yeah. not even worth trying yeah <laughs> <laughs> um okay so what book would you recommend to all entrepreneurs to read if they could only read one is there one that's really impacted you and your entrepreneurial journey um or gosh. podcast <laughs> yeah I'm gonna say I'm a really big reader and I'm really um one thing that helps me like calm down is reading novels and so oh, that, like amazing. I focus my reading on novels but I do listen to a lot of podcasts um gosh I've listened to how I built this I was mm -hmm. I find extremely inspiring um I mean those are like massive scale built businesses yeah but they're also just started by like people normal like, people <laughs> yeah, normal people that start really small and most of them I would say 100% of them don't have like any backers like they just mm -hmm. start out with an idea so that's just really inspirational mm -hmm. um under the influence I really like so that talks about that's a Canadian one um, <laughs> that talks about just like marketing and psychology behind what people are looking for it's very interesting um Jenna Kutcher's podcast Gold yeah, Digger is a really so good, good one mm -hmm. amazing um, yeah okay we'll link those we'll link yeah. all of those in the show notes so anyone listening can take a look mm -hmm. um but yeah, so Olivia, it's been so much fun chatting to you today and learning more about your story and all of this. Um, I'd like to ask you one last question before we say goodbye. Sure. What is the biggest lesson that you've learned in all your years of business? The biggest lesson is to not undersell myself. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's like the hardest thing. I think that women struggle with it, especially is just like not believing that you are worth what you're really worth like mm -hmm. not underpriced um and just believe in believe in what you're making and that you are offering value to people and that it's worth what it's actually worth I think that's I love that you know what that is a lesson everyone everyone needs um, especially women I think we often underprice and undervalue ourselves and doubt ourselves and yeah. you know a lot of creatives doubt their designs and doubt what people will pay for their designs and mm -hmm. doubt the value that they're bringing to the world so yeah, yeah thank you for sharing that I think that's so important for everyone listening I agree. Yeah. and such a good reminder um so yeah Olivia thank you so much for being thank here um, and sharing your story it's so inspiring so for everyone listening who's feeling really inspired, they really want to check out your rings. Um, you definitely want to have a look at her rings if you are listening. Um, where can they find you and how can our listeners support you? Um, so my shop is oliviaewing.com and follow me on Instagram, Olivia Ewing yep. Jewelry. Um, I am always, always listen to, always respond to DMs and emails and however anybody wants to reach out, just even if you just want to say hi, I listen to your podcast. So it'd be great. <laughs> Amazing. And so we'll put all of those links in the show notes. So anyone listening, you can go click there now and follow Olivia on her journey. And you can also sign up for her emails. Um, so we'll link all of that for you. And yeah, thank you so much for being here, Olivia. It's been so much fun chatting to you. Thank you, Robin. It was, it was really fun. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me.